Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. I, my name is Honorable Dixon Taki. I represent Marco D. Guma Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from the Food Basket State of Benue. I move that it be for an act to repeal the National Program on Immunization Act Cap 71 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 to remove the replication of functions between the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency and the National Program on Immunization and for related matters. I so move. Thank you. Any second? I stand before you, this, uh, this Honorable House, to lead a debate on a simple matter that may very well not require that Honorable colleagues waste their time in debating on because my Honorable colleagues, Mr. Speaker, the proposition before us is straight to the point on ambiguous. It is a simple task of seeing to it that an unnecessary law is repealed. It is another day in the history of our legislative assignment where we expunge from the laws of the Federation a law that has become redundant, repetitive, and encourages a replication of duties, the sort of thing this Honorable House is known to always stand against. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, immunization the world over is a key feature of primary health care. Indeed, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, established by an act of this parliament, is sufficiently equipped by its enacting laws to carry out immunization nationwide. What's more, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency carries out all federal government programs on immunization. However, there is a national program on immunization acts 1997. This law serves no apparent purpose right now. Nothing it seeks to promote is alien to the powers of the and functions already escapulated in the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, in the course of my interaction with the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and community health professionals, I found out that in 2007, in a bid by the presidency to avoid duplication of efforts and to cut cost of governance, a presidential directive was issued to have the national program on immunization collapse into the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. This has remained the case since then, and so the National Primary Health Care Development Agency has continued to carry out national immunization programs as one of its core primary health care responsibilities. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I am confident that we are aware of the era in our history that gave rise to this tendency of taking out programs from institutions of government through the brute force of curious decrees under the military rule and then domiciling them in the constitutionally, constitutionally unrecognized office of the face lady from whence government and other donor funds are then piled and preferred under the ostensible reason for accelerate national development for the program. That era has since been eclipsed by now that as lawmakers dutifully, honorably sitting in chambers to deliberate the essence of every piece of legislation or variation to an existing legislation. legislation. This is a new down in the prevailing realities that have since placed immunization within the purview of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, where it belongs, thereby making, the utterly, uh, making it utterly redundant the National Program on Immunization Act 1997. It is for these reasons, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, that I am confident that this honorable house on this day shall withdraw from existence a provision that is surplus to requirement and one that, if led to be, will only create opportunity for duplication of efforts. It is provision like this one that usually leads different agencies of government seeking funding on essentially the same, the same project. We owe it a duty to reduce the cost of governance by eliminating provisions that, when acted upon, surge the cost of governance as well as replicate functions and powers already assigned to one agency. It is my humble desire, therefore, 
that honorable colleagues will appreciate this bill in the light of this explanation and accord it the best judgment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and my honorable colleagues for your time. Honorable Dr. M.S. Abdul.